and uh, on land you don't get to see any of that and it just becomes like a, a nightmare to deal with interrupts it's a completely different game speedy once again uh, embracing the the team in the team room but here we go eight seconds until these teams clash into one another we have a mirror here in round one it is just a best of three so it's anybody's game here and hello from Zimbabwe they want to make their mark right here right now against the GCD champions here we go the mage and getting pulled out from Burt's Blizzard. Both mages are going to be shooting their frost bolts at each other, building up the icicles. We're going to be really looking for which team's going to pull the trigger. Burt pulling the trigger, deep freeze, but he's low HP. He gets locked on frost. He's actually going to trinket to get out of the solar beam to go for a polymorph, but he's not going to be able to land it. Uh, PvP master now in a deep freeze, trying to get that ring of frost landed. He's not going to be able to get that either. The bark skin forced out of Asper though very early to answer the celestial alignment from GSP. Now the damage being turned around onto GSP, and so many trinkets got blown that I can barely keep track. Looking down at the cooldown bar. Yeah, Floria is the only one with this PvP trinket left at the moment. Floria and uh, PvP Master both using Avenging Wrath very early, making sure their teams are stabilized. Neither one, neither team rather, wants to fall behind early, so they're making sure they use their cooldown so they can stay aggressive. Um, uh, Floria actually caught into the deep freeze right now, the beam going out on Asper. Caught into a Hodge, Floria caught into the full sheep, and a hell from Zimbabwe has a really good start here onto Asper. Into the DR bash, 30% HP Floria out of that TC finally gets a sack out onto Asper. Still has Save of the Light available, but he gets cloned up by GSP. Now GSP in a lot of trouble, down to 40% HP. PvP Master was in a Ring of Frost out of that TC now, trying to get off some heals. Uh, GSP getting offensively cloned up. Uh, PvP Master now caught into that root beam by Asper, uh, pushing in. They smell blood in the water. The full clone on a PvP Master. GSP gets just a huge heal, or catches a huge heal from PvP Master, uh, and is able to get topped off. Yep, deep freeze on the Floria. Burt looking for a polymorph. He's going to land the full polymorph as we're pulling back defensively. Stampeding Roar. He's going to displace her to the other side of the map, trying to just kite as much as possible. PvP Master even chasing after Asper at this point. A full clone landed onto Floria from GSP, and Asper is able to line a sight quite well. They're going to finally catch up. The double ice now into the full Hodge. He does get dispelled on that. Frost on to Floria. He actually has to aura mastery out of the Frost Jaw, which means the next root solar beam, which is available from GSP, is going to sit full onto him. Uh, he's trying to push up, though. GSP caught in a Hodge. Burt getting pressure here, a clone onto GSP, PvP Master leaving the CC though, trying to rebuke that polymorph, he's gonna get cloned by Asper instead, Burt dipping low, he gets locked on Frost, 28%, 1%, and that lockout is gonna cost him his life, Majidin catching him out there and taking him down very quickly. Yeah, that was very well done by Majidin, I mean, Burt still had almost all his cooldowns left, ready to go, would have been completely fine if it wasn't for that lockout, and I mean, if we look at the cooldowns, Majidin had already used both his blocks offensively, Burt had one ice block ready for him, so... Mage is making sure they can stay offensive using those ice blocks, but uh, if they do that a little too fast, they can definitely get punished for it. You're As absolutely right, man. I mean, you guys said it right before this match started, is that, oh, this is going to go to dampening, isn't it? As I, we've seen that uh, Hello, or our weekly income, this team likes to bring the game to dampening sometimes, and uh, but that's just not the case right here. You guys said it yourselves, that it very well may just end just like that, very abruptly. These teams looking for that opportunity to land a kill and landing it, and there we go. The very first game is going to go to our weekly income. And uh, we're going to jump into game number two here in just a moment. Now, I mean, considering it's a, uh, <laughs> it's a mirror, there probably there isn't any map advantages that they, get, they have available to them. So nope. I'm just going to figure gonna out. Be, uh, this is going to be maps they're comfortable with, I guess. All right. If there's, maybe sense. there's some specific strategy they can do on a map that they figured out. Uh, who knows? But ultimately, like you said, there's not going to be much of an advantage for either team. I think that both teams really don't know the mirror matchup perfectly. <laughs> like, it's really unstable, it seems like, for both teams. Like, using Aura Mastery on a one-second silence or trinketing out of, like, the first cyclone that hits you and, like, trying to answer these cooldowns. Both teams are were playing really safe. Like, as safe as you could possibly be playing uh, to stay alive. And unfortunately, Burt caught, caught on his cast and he wasn't able to block as a result, so... Uh, and I think if they're aware of the fact that Major Den didn't have any blocks, they might try and make a similar swap to him in this next game. And it kind of both teams are just going to feel each other out. But as we're taking the first game, and it's already a comfy position when you're one up. It's a very comfy position, but here we go, guys. We're going to jump into the second map of this best of three series, and it's none other than Tiger's Peak.
Welcome everybody to Tiger Speak, our weekly our weekly income going up against Hello from Zimbabwe, a mirror match here in round one. Now can these underdogs take down the previous tournament champions here? I don't know. That very first game didn't really say much, but it did say that our weekly income can definitely find those opportunities and just nail it. So here we go. The doors are about to open now. Yeah, and I think that uh, Bert's going to be a little bit more cautious about how much casting he's doing um, and aware of the situation. PvP Master may be going to be a bit more greedy with his trinket. Floria was the only one that escaped the beginning seconds without having to trinket. Uh, both teams in stealth for now. The mage is finally going to be coming out here shortly, building up their icicles. Asper coming out of stealth as well. GSP still the only member in stealth. Maybe looking for an early root solar beam. He's going to get Floria on his cast, opening very aggressively here on Asper, taking him down at 75%. Hodge on Asper, deep freeze onto Floria. He's going to bark skin immediately. Is it going to be enough? Floria leaves the frost jaw, pops the avenging wrath, gets some big heals out here. Asper going for a defensive cycle on a bird. Polly on a PvP Master. 3v1 on the GSP. He's down at 30%. Barskin's way too late and gets taken down here right at the 45 second mark. Wow. That See, was quick. <laughs> in, in the best of three, that means our weekly income is going to take a quick series and move on to round two. And it looks like, Super Tease, you will not be eating your hat today. I like my hat. I wouldn't want to eat it. You made it a safe bet, it looks like. Yeah, it was a safe bet indeed. In hindsight, it's a safe bet. You just never know. But I, I mean, that's a, I, I play that team on the ladder, and there I can't even count how many games I've lost to them in the first minute. Like, uh, I don't know, just over and over and over. Just get one shot. It sucks. Well uh, then. Celestial alignment's <laughs> very scary. 